These readings in the past, in the last week of the church year, between Christ the King and the first Sunday of Advent, they should really shatter us. We should feel awe and trembling and gratitude for the friendship, for the grace which God offers us to continue our lives. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, from verses 2 to 14, uh, this is quite a fearful vision how the beasts, these symbolic animals, are given power to act out their destructive powers. But this vision ends with the vision of God. Thrones were set in place and one of great age took his seat. His robe was white as snow, the hair of his head as pure as wool. And then we can anticipate the final victory of Christ, the risen Lord, anticipated in this powerful vision. I gazed into the visions of the night, and I saw coming on the clouds of heaven one like a son of man. He came to the one of great age, and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory and kingship, and men of all peoples, nations and languages became his servants. His sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty which shall never pass away, nor will his empire ever be destroyed. By reading uh, Daniel's vision, instinctively we associate of the destructive powers raging in our world in the form of wars and in the form of fueling these wars either by means of war propaganda or by the arm industry or through economical interests. We Christians have to be vigilant and discerning the signs of times. Human history at the moment seems to be a very, very sad show. We can see how politicians, how countries, armies, military power, economic power, how decision-making is led astray and deceived. And the deceiver is Satan itself. And we can, in the light of these visions, we should really raise the question that do we do everything as individual Christians to keep our vision clear, to keep our moral sight uh, clear and unblurred? And in this last week, none of us can escape uh, uh, the popular culture around us, um, the sad news from the press, the news of scandals, the news of celebrities, and just uh, let us shed a teeny tiny ray on, on all of us, starting with ourselves, and then, without sounding judgmental, let us shed a light of these visions of Daniel on all politicians and let us recall have you heard of scandals from our politicians sexual economical financial uh, misbehavior uh, have we heard of uh, for example divorce from the part of politicians or cheating or lying whatever forms we should never forget 
that acts like this in our lives, in the life of all of us, lead to this blurring of our moral vision of the world. It weakens the clarity of thinking. And when we see foreign secretaries, heads of governments or ministers, decision makers, talking about the need to make more and more weapons, to sustain wars, instead of crying for peace on our needs, on our knees, we humbly have to accept that our leaders, perhaps starting with ourselves, through our mistakes, are misled by Satan. Fuel in war, instead of echoing the need for peace, is the voice of Satan echoed in human pompous hubristic voices. Let us pray.